Good morning. I'm Father Steve, and this is Moments with the Master. Today is the second day of March 2021, and our readings today come from Psalms 50, Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 23, verses 1 through 12, and where I'm going to try and draw my reflections today, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 10, and also verse 16 through 20. Folks, as we read this passage today, we see God's giving us an analysis of, of humanity, of our shortcomings, being self-centered, full of deceit, full of sin. He's calling us out on our, fa our flaws and our failures. And yet, in verse 16, he immediately gives us a solution to our problem. And we read, wash yourself clean and put away your misdeeds before, from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Well, two things come to my mind. One is an answer to people who tell me, you know, the God of the Old Testament and New Testament seem to be two different beings. One of, of judgment and wrath and the God of the New Testament, mercy and love. And this passage answers that question that they're incorrect. So we, we see that God wants us to come back to him. He's given us an answer. Yeah, there's judgment and there'll be wrath if we don't, but he's giving a solution. And obviously that solution is, is, is from love. And the second thing that comes to my mind is how can we as, as, I guess, evil people do good? And in verse 18 through 20, God gives us a, a template, template of where we should be going. Uh, it reads, Learn to do good, make justice your aim, address the wrong, hear the orphans please, defend the widow, Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they may become white as wool. If you are willing to obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, you, you shall be eaten by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken." Folks, God is clear. He's, he's doing this out of love for us. He's telling us what we need to do. But it couldn't be any plainer. Man can't help himself, but God's given us direction. Uh, and then honestly, we can't heal ourselves. We, we can't change our habits. Uh, you know, on our, on our own, you know, we'd, we'd like to, to be better people. Most of us would. Uh, even the non-believers, you know, you ask them, and they'll tell you, well, I'd like to be a good person. Well, God's here giving us a, a, a direction, a couple step-by-step -step things we should do. Uh, and yet, in light of this, we see that the only real answer is, is through the gospel, through the salvation to our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and what better time now than to take this template up uh, during Lent? All those things that God wants us to do for ourselves and for others. Uh, a time to change our, our, our direction, our poor choices, our addictions, our bad habits. Uh, and God's calling us every Lent to repentance. As we look forward to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and our, our salvation through his sacrifice on the cross, his glorious triumph uh, is a resurrection. We should ponder on what God wants us to do. But God also has given us a, ch a choice to make that on our own. He's also given us the Holy Spirit to strengthen us when we decide to make those choices, those choices to come back to him. Um, 
you know, I know you all, have, like me, have, have made numerous attempts at uh, cleaning up your own lives. You know, often we get the, the urge during the year to change direction, to change bad habits, addictions, whatever they may be. And often, if it, anything like myself, we fail. You know, we come up short. Uh, we don't get it right. Um, we stop temporarily and then, and then we go back to what we were doing. And the answer really is because we're trying to do it ourselves. Like a lot of people that haven't come to the Lord, they, they think they need to clean themselves up before they come to the Lord with a request. And I, I want to tell you, that's not the case. God loves you the way you are, and he wants you to come to him the way you are. Uh, you know, he, he's found a way to break through all of our shortcomings and sin. And that's just by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, salvation through grace. You know, nothing else is going to matter. And God will give us the strength through the Holy Spirit to follow that template that he gave us to us, gave it to us in Isaiah. Uh, see, folks, humanity really hasn't changed in thousands of years. You know, we all want to do it on our own. We all want to come to God on our terms. And that's not the ways God's going to allow it. He's just not going to allow us to do what we want to do. Uh, it's, it's not on the reading today, but verse 11 says, What do I care for the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs, and goats, I find no pleasure. See, folks, the people in Isaiah's time were trying to please God their own way, and yet not change their lives. Uh, and if we contrast that with today's reading in the Gospel of Matthew 23, where it says, And the scribes and the Pharisees have taken the seat, seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do not do and observe all the things whatsoever they tell you, but not follow their example. For they preach... But they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them before the people's shoulders. But they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. Like I've told you a bunch of times, God's not fooled. He knows why you're doing things, and and you know you're you're he knows your heart. He knows where you're going with this. Uh, He's not impressed. See, the people of Isaiah's time, the people of, of the Lord's time, were all trying to do the right thing by, by sacrificing and, and follow the laws, but yet in their hearts, they, they didn't really practice them. Like I said, people haven't changed in thousands of years. Uh, what the Lord wants is true repentance, true fellowship, true devotion. He's not looking for sacrifices that mean nothing to us. Um, em empty and vain uh, attempts. You know, because in the, in the end, like I said before, it's only through the grace that we're saved through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior. You know, and I, when I say these things, I always get that, that look from people and you know, I get these statements. Um, I try, but I screw up. You know, I try, but I fail. I, um, I'm always stumbling. You know, I, I fall into sin. I fall back into my addictions. And does that does that mean I don't have a, a true relationship with God? I go, no, not really. It means you're human. It's like you're like you and, and me and, and everybody else. God understands that we're going to make those those mistakes. We're going to stumble. Um, God's not surprised. Um, that's why in John 1, I'm, I'm sorry, 1 John 2 and 1, 
he states, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So folks, take up your cross every time you, you stumble, every time you fall. Come back to the Lord. Don't try and do it on your own. And by all means, don't try and fool the Lord by empty attempts of, of pleasing Him and when your heart's not in it. God's not fooled. You know, our challenge today is to follow the Lord. And not just as believers, but as followers. Committed followers. In our hearts, in our minds, in our actions. Uh, you know, the, the uh, act of contrition that many, many Catholics say, uh, use the words, firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Folks, that really is the goal. It should be the goal for, for every Christian. And we can do that. We can be assured that though our, your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will become white as wool. Folks, I'm hoping that during this Lenten time, you'll reflect on those shortcomings that you may have. Ask the Lord to send His Holy Spirit to strengthen you to, in your resolve and your commitment that you'll overcome you know, all the, the shortcomings you have. Folks, those are my reflections for today. It's been Father Steve, and I've been wishing you all the best. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand until we meet again.